If you're looking for a down-home meal with all the fixings, you won't find it at Larry's Country Diner, because what they're serving up are the best country music artists of yesterday and today. This nationally broadcast show is flavored with impromptu dialogue and lots of music. And Larry Black makes sure that every dish comes with a side of scripture. Make a loud noise and rejoice. Psalms 90. <laughs> 98 4. I recently talked with my longtime friend about his autobiography. The cameras weren't always rolling. It's about how God used this preacher's kid from Mobile, Alabama, to not only bring together generations of country artists, but also gave them an outlet to share their experiences with Jesus. I really thought maybe I'd be a missionary. There was something intriguing about that. Uh, knew I didn't want to pastor a church. <laughs> knew I didn't want to be a preacher. And the Lord didn't have that for me. Radio is what finally broke through. What was that? radio breakthrough. <clears throat> I had a teacher in high school. Uh, he had been an admiral in the Navy and was teaching algebra. And uh, I had done a halftime show uh, with the band where I narrated what they were doing on field. And the next day in algebra class, he said, you need to consider radio. I think he looked at my math scores <laughs> and he said, you need to consider radio. And I'd never thought about that. So after high school, he got married to Lou Ann and took her around the country as he DJed and marketed for a number of secular stations, mostly playing rock and roll. Then in 1969, he felt God calling him back to his Christian roots. Pat Robertson hired him to work for the sales department on my program, The Scott Ross Show. It was the first of its kind radio broadcast that played both contemporary Christian and secular rock and roll. And back then, the government mandated that radio stations had to have a certain amount of religion. Well, no rock and roll radio station wanted religion. Right. But here was an opportunity to write off your religious time right. with a show that played the same music that they played. Later, I handed over the reins to him in 1976, changing the name to The Larry Black Show. He moved his operations to the Music City, Nashville, Tennessee, where he would broadcast in 125 radio stations nationwide. After seven successful years, he got another big break when he landed a gig DJing at Nashville's iconic country music station, WSM. All of the country music stars listen to WSM. So I was on there for two and a half years they knew me, they knew my family, they knew the kids' names, they knew Luann's name. During this time, Larry also ventured into acting. In the coming years, he played in a number of movies and TV series, such as Ernest Goes to Camp, In the Heat of the Night, The Cape, and October Sky. He also created the highly successful TV show, Country's Family Reunion, which has been airing for over two decades. Putting 30 of the legacy artist in a room with a live band, shoot it with eight cameras, and let them just laugh and giggle for two days. And you're talking about country artists that were well known. Yeah, well, my perspective on it was, it doesn't really matter who the person was. Mm -hmm. If they did something that was honorable and to be honored, then you honored that. Then in 2009, he introduced Larry's Country Diner. I said, I'll just do a, an hour show, but I don't want to, sit with a fireplace in between me and the artist or a table between, you know, I wanted to do it, something different. But all that almost came to an end on June 18, 2015. An ATV accident in the mountains of Montana left him and his friend Randy Little badly injured. But Larry knew God was in control. A helicopter was flying over right at that time. They saw it happen. They were a medical helicopter from Cody, Wyoming. They landed, they picked him up, and life flighted him to Billings, Montana. And you're still lying under the ATV? Yeah. Larry had a broken back and punctured lungs. There were multiple injuries, internal injuries, and uh, they cut me out. When they, when they lifted the ATV off of me, that's when I went south. And uh, they lost me on the way to Billings. They thought you were dead? Yeah. 
Randy was released from the hospital after three days, but Larry still had a long way to go. So I spent the next six days in ICU in Billings at St. Vincent Hospital and the next 33 days in the hospital. Uh, I couldn't move. Uh, one of my other sponsors uh, sent a, a Learjet up with a medical team to pick Luann and I up and fly us home. And at that, kind of at that moment, it was like, all right, readjust your life. That included making God the focus on special episodes of Country's Family Reunion. He called them the Wednesday night prayer meeting and another Wednesday night. No matter what you're doing, there's a light that shines. And everybody in here today is shining that light. Yeah. Through these and other stories in his autobiography, Larry wants to be clear that in the successes and struggles, God was always there. Luann said, Larry, you need to do it for your grandkids, right. the 10 grandkids, so they'll know the way you've come. And I've, I've said in the book, God has no grandkids. Yeah. He's got sons and daughters. Hmm. He does not have grandchildren. And my desire for them is to know the God that I know yeah. and to serve him. Hmm. So that was the main reason for putting it all down while I could still remember most of it. 